Welcome to the Biochem Seria episode entitled Glycosaminoglycans and Proteoglycans. This is an episode of the playlist on chemistry of carbohydrates, which is linked above. Feel free to click above and visit the playlist to view the other episodes on this topic. To start this episode, let us first discuss what glycosaminoglycans are. The glycosaminoglycans, a group of acidic heteropolysaccharides, are important structural elements of the extracellular matrix or abbreviated as ECM. They are important constituents of proteoglycans, as we will shortly see. The glycosaminoglycans are made up of repeating disaccharide units, each of which consists of one uronic acid and one amino sugar. The proteoglycans bind large amounts of water and fill the gaps between the fibrillar components of the ECM in the form of a hydrated gel. This inhibits the spread of pathogens in the ECM, for example. As mentioned, the glycosaminoglycans are made up of repeating disaccharide units, each of which consists of one uronic acid, like glucuronic acid or iduronic acid, and one amino sugar specifically, N-acetylglucosamine or N-acetylgalactosamine. Many of these amino sugars are also esterified with sulfuric acid, or sulfated, further increasing their polarity. Examples of glycosaminoglycans are hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, heparin, keratin sulfate and dermatin sulfate. As we have seen in the previous slide, at least six types of glycosaminoglycans exist. The different types differ in the monosaccharides present in their repeating disaccharide units. Examples again are chondroitin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, heparin, heparin sulfate, hyaluronic acid, and keratin sulfates 1 and 2. Except for hyaluronic acid, the glycosaminoglycans are linked to proteins, usually attached covalently to serine or threonine residues. Keratin sulfate I, however, is attached to asparagine. This attachment of GAGs to core proteins give rise to proteoglycans. After synthesis, proteoglycans are secreted from cells, thus, they function extracellularly. Because the long, negatively charged glycosaminoglycan chains repel each other, the proteoglycans occupy a very large space, and act as molecular sieves, determining which substances enter or leave cells. Their properties also give resilience and a degree of flexibility to substances such as cartilage, permitting compression and re-expansion of the molecule to occur. This table lists some important specific functions of the glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans. Are glycoproteins and proteoglycans the same? Let us try to differentiate. Glycoproteins are compounds containing carbohydrate, or glycan, covalently linked to the protein. The carbohydrate may be in the form of monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides, or their derivatives, for example, sulfo or phospho-substituted sugars. One, a few, or many carbohydrate units may be present. Proteoglycans, on the other hand, are a subclass of glycoproteins in which the carbohydrate units are polysaccharides that contain amino sugars, which are termed glycosaminoglycans or abbreviated as GAGs. Glycoproteins, also known as mucoproteins, occur in many different situations in fluids and tissues, including the cell membranes. They are proteins containing branched or unbranched oligosaccharide chains, including sialic acid, as shown in the table. Glycoproteins bind large amounts of water and fill the gaps between the fibrillar components of the ECM in the form of a hydrated gel, inhibiting the spread of pathogens in the ECM. The sialic acids are N or O acyl derivatives of neuraminic acid, as shown in the figure at the right. Neuraminic acid is a 9-carbon sugar derived from manosamine, an epimer of glucosamine, and pyruvate. Sialic acids are constituents of both glycoproteins and gangliosides. As mentioned, proteoglycans contain many long unbranched glycosaminoglycans or GAGs attached to a core protein. The proteoglycans are essential parts of the extracellular matrix, the aqueous humor of the eye, secretions of mucus producing cells, and cartilage. We have learned that the GAGs are composed of repeating units of disaccharides. One sugar of the disaccharide is either N-acetylglucosamine or N-acetylgalactosamine, and the second is usually acidic, either glucuronic acid or iduronic acid. These sugars are modified by the addition of sulfate groups to the parent sugar. A proteoglycan may contain more than 100 glycosaminoglycan chains, and consist of up to 95% oligosaccharide by weight. The large number of negative charges causes the glycosaminoglycan chains to radiate out from the protein, so that the overall structure resembles a bottle brush. To continue, the negatively charged carboxylate and sulfate groups on the proteoglycan bind positively charged ions, and form hydrogen bonds with trapped water molecules, thereby creating a hydrated gel. 
The gel provides flexible mechanical support to the extracellular matrix. The gel also acts as a filter that allows the diffusion of ions, water, and other small molecules, but slows diffusion of proteins and movement of cells. Hyaluronan is the only gag that occurs as a single long polysaccharide chain and is the only gag that is not sulfated. Proteoglycans provide the ground or packing substance of connective tissues. Their property of holding large quantities of water and occupying space, thus cushioning or lubricating other structures, is due to a large number of OH groups and negative charges on the molecules. These negative charges, by repulsion, keep the carbohydrate chains apart. Examples, as enumerated before, are hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, and heparin, to name a few. Lysosomal enzymes degrade proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and glycolipids, which are brought into the cell by the process of endocytosis. Lysosomes fuse with the endocytic vesicles, and lysosomal proteases digest the protein component. The carbohydrate component is degraded by lysosomal glycosidases. Lysosomes contain both endoglycosidases and exoglycosidases. The endoglycosidases cleave the chains into shorter oligosaccharides. Then exoglycosidases, specific for each type of linkage, remove the sugar residues, one at a time, from the non-reducing ends. Deficiencies of lysosomal glycosidases cause partially degraded carbohydrates from proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and glycolipids to accumulate within membrane-enclosed vesicles inside cells. These residual bodies can cause marked enlargement of the organ with impairment of its function. This group of clinical disorders, known as the mucopolysaccharidoses, is caused by the accumulation of partially degraded glycosaminoglycans. These disorders share many clinical features, although there are significant variations between disorders, and even within a single disorder, based on the amount of residual enzymatic activity remaining. In most cases, multiple organ systems are affected, with bone and cartilage being a primary target. For some disorders, there is significant neuronal involvement, leading to mental retardation. This concludes this episode of the Biochem Seria series of this topic. Feel free to watch the other Biochem Seria episodes of this lecture as linked on the next screen, and in the description below. Please subscribe to our channel, the Biochem Seria channel, click on the notification bell button, and be notified of new videos to be uploaded. Content will be added regularly.